Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will introduce you to a fantastic new feature that we added in UI Builder that we call Layouts. Uh, it is very easy to understand what layouts do, and it is just as easy to work with them. But let me describe the actual problem first. So if you picture any kind of web application or a mobile application, pretty much all of them will have some kind of fixed structure in the way the information is presented to you. Specifically, in web apps, you would expect to find a header in the app, a footer, a standard place for the menu. Perhaps there will be some other elements of the overall framing of the content and the app functionality on the screen. And the same thing goes for the mobile applications. You would find some kind of uh, button bar at the button at the bottom with various icons, or there would be a, uh, a menu that slides out and is present there. But anyway, pretty much all of the screens in a mobile app and all of the pages in the web app would have a fixed structure that is shared between all the pages and all the screens. So with, with that in mind, if you think about that structure, it, it is really a, lay, a layout. And that's what we call them in UI Builder now, layouts. So you can create a layout and assign a layout to various pages or screens in your application that you build with UI Builder. You could have multiple layouts in the same app. Uh, more often you would have really just one layout, but if you need to, you could have multiple. And then the pages that share the layout, they would just render within that layout and you would you can program that layout once and then all of the pages that are rendered in that layout will inherit that look and feel and the functionality. And the layout itself could have its own logic, so whatever uh, components that you place into the layout, you can program the logic for those components and the layout can interact with the pages that are rendered in the layout in a bi-directional way. In fact, there is a special data model, and if you're familiar with UI Builder, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There is a special data model that is assigned to a layout, and whenever a page is rendered in a layout, it can use that data model to place data in there and then use data binding and so, and so on. So multiple pages that share the same layout could actually pass data from one page to another through the layout data data model. To put it all in the context, let me uh, demonstrate how it works because it is uh, it is very easy to understand. As I as I said, once you actually see it is in action, and for this I put together a little demo that is illustrative enough to really understand how layouts work. So let's dig in and see how they work in UI Builder. This is the application that I have prepared to demonstrate the layouts functionality. In this application, I have just two pages. One is called Countries, and it lists a uh, uh, provides a listing of the countries. In fact, let me run this page just so you can see what uh, it looks like once the data is rendered. So here is a, a listing of the countries and the continent that any given country is in and their, and their gross national product. The second page that I have is called cities. And then this page lists uh, all the cities for the selected country. So if I go back to the countries page and uh, for instance, I click on Australia, then the page cities renders all the cities that I have in the database for Australia. So this is uh, this is what I have. And then as you can see the, right now, it's a very basic setup where literally just one data grid component in a page. And uh, in an application, as you imagine, there would be some additional structure to an application. As I mentioned earlier, there may be a footer, uh, header, menu, and so on. So that's where layouts come in. And then as far as layouts, uh, there is a new tab called layouts. And when you go here, you can create a new layout. So when you click new layout, uh, these are the built-in layouts that we have prepared. However, uh, if these do not work for you, you can customize any of these or create your own 100% uh, custom layout with whatever logic and functionality you want to have. So for, th for this demo, let's uh, pick this sticky header plus footer layout. So I'm going to select this guy and uh, give it a name and call it my layout. Uh, when you create a layout, it's going to be a, a, a row in this table here. You can clone this layout, you can delete, or you can edit this layout's UI and logic. So when you click on this, 
uh, this opens up and this and it works exactly as a page in UI Builder. So here you have the components, you can move them around, you can uh, program logic, you can do everything that you already know. But keep in mind that this is the what you're editing is the layout and it will be shared between multiple pages. And I will demonstrate how to, well, if let me just demonstrate right now. So we select this block and let's change its color to something else just like this. This is kind of nasty. Let's make it a little bit better. I don't know. Here it is. Uh, also, let's select the header. And uh, for the header, we will also change the color to, uh, to whatever, right? So now we have customized uh, this layout. Now, if I want my countries and cities to be rendered in here, I can associate my countries and cities pages with this layout. And as you can see in the layout itself, and here it says editing layout. In the layout itself, there is a special area called page render area. And you can customize this page render area to be located anywhere within the layout. And I will show you how uh, the customizations work as well. So this is where the content of my pages will show up for any page that uses this layout. So let's just, let me demonstrate how that linkage between the pages and the layout work. And for this, I'm gonna to go to the countries page. And on the page itself, if I select the actual page, which is the top level component in this hierarchy, right? So the page itself, uh, you will see that there is this layout property. And in the layout property, I can select uh, a layout that I already have installed. And you could have multiple layouts, all of them will show up in this list. But in this case, I have just one layout and that layout is used on the page. When I select the layout, the page here doesn't change because here we want you to focus and see the actual content of the page. The layouts are managed separately and you can program their logic and look and feel separately. But now, since this page is associated with this layout, if I run this page in the preview, you will see that the page is now rendered inside of this layout and any logic that is associated with the actual layout is automatically inherited, okay? But since I did the linkage between the page and the layout only for countries, if I select a country in here, for instance, Spain, okay? The other page is rendered outside of the layout. So let's fix that. I'm gonna close the preview and then go to the cities page and then link my cities page to the same layout, okay? So now if I were to rerun countries and then from the countries, I'm gonna select a country. Now notice that the cities is being re-rendered. What's interesting about this is whenever I navigate from one page to another, only this section is being updated. The rest of the layout is never refreshed, is never reloaded. It just sits in the browser. So this really functions as a single page application because all those pages, they really become this one part of this dynamic content that is managed by UI Builder. And, uh, and this is beautiful because now you could have this shared layout that applies to all of your pages. In fact, uh, let's make a change just to demonstrate how it works. So I'm going to go to layouts and select this layout. This is the page enter render area and it sits in the block. So this is the block that hosts this uh, page render area. And then if you selected another layout, it may be done differently. So you just need to see how the whole thing is structured. So what I'm gonna do is for this block that houses this page render area, I will remove this max width, right? So now it stretches out entirely for the whole layout. So now if I go to my countries and rerun this page, guess what? The whole page render area is now full, full uh, width, and that's uh, that's what's going on. So if I select a country, oh, there are only two cities in here, but notice that the change in the layout now applies to all of the pages that use that specific layout. Uh, as far as programming, whenever you are in the layout, and for this, let me switch the layout and go to the edit logic, and in here whatever is going on in the actual layout. Uh, 
as far as visibility or showing it only when uh, certain pages are there or uh, creating dynamic content in your uh, header or footer or anywhere else, you can definitely do that because whenever you go into the actual logic for anything in the layout or the pages that use the layout in here for any of the events, you will see this layout data block. Okay, and this layout data block is a special data model, very similar to app data and page data. In other words, it will accept keys and value properties. However, what's different about the layout data, it, it is uh, the, the life cycle of that data model. So page data lives on as long as the page is active. App data lives as long as the application is active in the browser or inside of uh, on the mobile device layout data will stay around as long as the consecutively loaded pages that use that layout are being active as soon as you jump off a page that uses a layout to another page that does not use that layout or uses some other layout whatever you had in the layout data is gone and you can read about it in the documentation so the docs describe layout data uh, with the programming model and how to use the layout data and how to create layouts so all of it is there now another thing that i wanted to demonstrate is if you take a new page and let me just create a new page and let's say it's going to be uh, login page, right? So I'm going to call it my login, for instance. And I don't know why I picked login, but let's just stick with it. So let's say you just created a page that has some kind of layout. You can actually take this page and make it a layout by clicking this button. Okay. So what's going to happen next? Let, let's just demonstrate this and you will see how it works. And it's going to assign this uh, default name, which is fine with me. So now I'm editing the layout. And notice that it created this page render area for you and you can move it uh, anywhere else, right? So this page render area uh, can be moved. It doesn't make sense here, but still the concept is that now this is a layout and whatever page that you link with this layout, this is where it's going to be rendered. It doesn't make sense here because this is just the login, but it demonstrates the concept. So this is a super, super powerful feature. Very excited about it. It really simplifies the process of creating web and mobile applications with UI Builder. Uh, please give it a try and let us know what you think. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, happy coding or no coding with Backendless.